Patriots will take on the Bengals on Sunday, coming off the big win over the Patriots in Week 9. Lamar Jackson and the gang are looking to keep the ball rolling. And with more on the Ravens, let's start with our very own Tom Pelissero. Thanks, Kay. Lamar Jackson was a surprise absence when the Ravens hit the practice field on Thursday. My understanding is Jackson has been battling an illness. It is nothing serious and will not impact his availability to start on Sunday against the Bengals. That's obviously great news for the Ravens, who are coming off a huge win over the Patriots and continue to be on a historic pace rushing the football, with Jackson at the center of it. Not only does Jackson have 161 more rushing yards than the entire Bengals' team the Ravens are averaging over 200 rushing yards per game the last team to do that through an entire season Walter Payton and the 1977 Bears I reviewed those numbers with running back Mark Ingram who told me we ain't trying to be crazy resetting record books and all that we're just trying to win games at all costs back to you Kay Appreciate you, Tom. Week 10's officially kicked off. Let's break down the great slate of games ahead with a round of Mad Minute before you two go play Mad Men-ish, guys. Mm. Down right, nice to mm. Let's start in Cincy. The Bengals are hosting the Ravens. It is an AFC North divisional matchup. Shregs. Uh, we've got the premiere of a quarterback. Ryan Finley making his first start. Of Obviously, of Andy Dalton was benched before the bye week. Curious to see how he plays. Look, you don't have A.J. Green. You don't necessarily have this great offensive line anymore. And yet, this might be a trial run for Ryan Finley over the next couple of weeks because if all things are going this way, the Bengals are going to have a top-five pick. If Ryan Finley lights it up and shows, hey, I could be the guy, you take a Chase Young. You take a different position player. You don't take a quarterback. Fascinated by Ryan Finley here because everyone's picking the Ravens. What if the Bengals get a little bit better with mm. a rookie quarterback and they get a little run of their own? You're a big Wink Martindale fan. I know love you love him. Wink. Imagine the challenge for Wink this week. You go from preparing your team for Tom Brady to preparing your team for Ryan Finley. And he had a great quote. He said, look, they're not an 0-8 offense. He said, we got to be serious about this. And I think it'll tell a lot about the Ravens. Like, is there any letdown? Is there any mail-in factor after the huge win? Are they a real Super Bowl contender? I think we find out more this week against a bad team sometimes. You're right. The young Ryan Finley is going to have to make that big jump like Michael Finley. But here's the thing. I, I feel like when it, comes to, when it comes to the, the Ravens, beat the teams you're supposed to beat and, and beat them handedly. Like, let's not make this one of those games where you play down to the level of your competition. I guess it's like a St. Patrick's Day at a bar called Ryan Finley. Is that right? It sounds Pretty perfect. Sure, yeah. I go to JT O'Sullivan. Finley O'Hulahan, something <laughs> yeah. like that. Uh, moving on. By the way, Lamar Jackson, let's give him his love. Since he took over week 11 as a starter for the Ravens, he is 12-3. and three. Look out. He's lost three games ever. Mm -hmm. Wild. Beat the goat. Beat the GOAT. Let's go to the Big Apple for both sides of the ball here. We've got the two New York teams squaring off Jets and Giants. Nate, what are you looking for? This summer went from I'm happy for Lev Bell because he got what he wanted. He got the money. He's in a big city, big market. He's been an absolute pro. But I went from happy to sad for Lev because Lev is trying to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders while remaining optimistic, talking to the fans, talking to his teams. And yet and still, he still hasn't had a 100-yard rushing game. Like, when is the Lev game going to come? And this isn't to Lev. This is more of the team. Help Le'Veon Bell. Mm. I just, I just want to see some good football. Like, just can we just get a decent game where the teams look competent? And I, I'm so tired of the Schadenfreude of the New York football because I look at it like it's kind of a cool tag team match: Darnold and Le'Veon, Daniel and Saquon. Like, I like that. It feels like Heart Foundation versus the Rockers. I just want to put a decent product out on the field. That's all I'm asking. I don't think it's too much to ask, Peter. I think it is too much to ask oh, with these great. two teams. They both as well. If you want a good game, <laughs> Yankee Stadium on Saturday. Dartmouth plays Princeton. Kyle will be there. I'll be there. there. Yeah. Here we go. Undefeated Princeton the undefe versus Dartmouth. undefeated Dartmouth. Ooh. That's the best football game in New York this great. week. Are you going anniversary. to that game? Yes, I'll be there Saturday. You see, Kyle, go take selfies with him and tweet at hashtag. We're going to honor your halftime, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Fun fact, the Giants have won five of the last six regular season games against the Jets. Let's head to Indianapolis. The Dolphins are coming to town to take on the Colts. Kyle, how do you see this one? I also think one of our bosses is going to be at Dartmouth Princeton. I mean, like, the big boss is going to be oh. there. So everybody's going to show up for that one. But, um... Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, um, other, other programming. <laughs> Regarding the Dolphins. Got daughters at Dartmouth, yeah? Yeah, the one who runs the whole oh, show. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Um, <laughs> Regarding the Dolphins, uh, there's also a Rick great you? game at 3.30 p.m. on CBS. Uh, it's uh, Alabama versus LSU, and you can view your future quarterback in the biggest game of his career, so check that out. Woo!
<laughs> I'm looking at the, well, Jacoby Brissett Tua. play. I don't know how healthy is he because that injury of, of Quentin Nelson collapsing on his ankle and then on his knee, I, my, my stomach dropped. And all of a sudden, my hopes of this magical season that Jacoby was supposed to have went down the drain. Let's see if he's on the field. And if he isn't. Oh, you're the destroyer, the baby. The destroyer going to hold it down. We did a Coach of the Year conversation yesterday, and nobody mentioned Frank Reich. And Twitter let us hear it and said, hey, mm. you could talk about Belichick and Kyle Shanahan and Harbaugh and Peyton. Frank Reich still deserves credit. And if he wins another couple games and Hoyer's the quarterback, well, now you're talking about your third string quarterback mm. and still possibly winning a division. Really impressive stuff. That's interesting. Hoyer hasn't won since 2016. It was week four. Anybody remember what team he was playing for? Hoyer. The Browns? 2016. Browns. He was actually no, no, playing no, the for Browns. the Niners. Texas. The Bears that wow. year. Put up over 300 yards and two touchdowns in a win against the wow. Lions. Ah.